All right, guys, welcome back to the final episode of the Mugen Civic. So in today's episode, we are going to tidy up loose ends. We're going to finish the windows, the wheels, and a couple of emblems, I believe, and the door handles. So we will wrap up this illustration today. So let's start by continuing on with the windows. We had started them earlier in the illustration to put in as a placeholder while we were drawing the uh, highlights and shadows on the body. So let's get back into drawing the windows. Now, right now, since uh, I hadn't at the time really had much of a process, I accidentally, again, started drawing on the wrong layer. So I was drawing on the wing layer, as you can see. So I took those three shapes and I drew them, or drug them down to the windows layer and then made sure all of the layers that I wasn't working on were locked. Okay, so now I can move forward. We'll speed this up a little bit since you guys have seen this a few times before. So I usually start with drawing a couple of the shadows and the low lights, and then I finish with drawing the highlights and getting those shapes in. And again, with the tail light, the passenger tail light of this vehicle being the main focus, um, I'm not trying to overcomplicate these shapes. So a lot of this is just drawing shapes on top of each other and then dragging them underneath other shapes if they need to sit underneath another shape. So it's really like once you're once you're working within a layer, you can take all of these paths that you're drawing and rearrange them in their hierarchy to see where they sit. And you can get some really cool results by doing so. So don't feel like you're forced to just draw a particular shape where it lies. I mean, you can draw something and then, you know, it's like throwing it under the rug and only part of it's sticking out, so to speak. So, okay, now I'm just gonna draw a few other highlights uh, on the main window here. And then as I notice certain areas that need to be filled in, I'll just draw a big fat shape or a path and uh, drag it to the bottom of that just so that it, it shows enough of what I want. Okay, so now time for the finishing, finishing move on the windows here with our gradient. Um, we've covered this in previous illustrations before. So basically I drew that on the top of everything and then I drug that path just like this one to the bottom of that layer that we're working on of the windows layer. So now you can see that it just adds enough of a reflection to make it appear like glass. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the Honda emblem here. And in a couple of my illustrations that uh, you can cheat a little bit and maybe get online and get, uh, get the emblem itself and bring it into Illustrator and do a trick to... Um, to get it to become vector art and use it that way. That way um, you're not essentially butchering the logo. This was pretty straightforward, pretty simple shape. Everybody's familiar with the Honda. If you go to my Instagram page, you see that I have a Ferrari that I have recently drawn. And in that illustration, I did not draw the prancing horse. And a lot of the reason is because it's so detailed and it wasn't at a perfect angle. I didn't want to butcher it and have it look like a horrible tattoo. So in that case, I did go online and I did get a picture of the prancing horse and I drew from there rather than drawing from the particular car image like this here with this Honda emblem. And that's basically it on the Honda emblem. We don't really need to um, you know, dwell on it too much. It's just a few simple shapes to get the general idea down. Okay, so now we're gonna start on the wheels and we're gonna start on the rear wheel first since, um, since it's right in front of us and has the most detail to draw from. So just like with the initial uh, drawing or how I always start my wheels, I use the ellipse tool and I just start creating different ovals and lining them up 
to get each bevel of the lip of the wheel down. And I might use these ellipses with fill color. I might just use these um, yellow lines from these ellipses as reference guides. But I kind of do a little bit of both. So now we're going to go through and we're going to assign some colors. I have moved this grouping of ellipses off to the right so that I can use the eyedropper tool and select some arbitrary colors to start with. Now I'm going to group that in that rear wheel and call that the barrel. That way I can turn that on and off easily and refer back to it. Now I start on drawing the face of this forged wheel. I kind of treat it like a three-piece wheel, even though it's forged. So that's about as much as we're going to get out of the face of the wheel. Okay, so these next few paths don't need to be exact as we are going to draw them and then drag them underneath the face of the wheel shape that we just created. So these are just a couple of highlights that can be positioned underneath that original shape so they don't need to be exact. And while we're working with the same color, go through and look at like tones and draw the rest of your shapes accordingly. Sometimes I realize I don't have enough of a black behind the wheel. Uh, it's usually where the brake rotor sits. Um, so sometimes I have to go back in and add um, a little extra dark shape to see what I'm working on. Okay, so now we're going to work on a couple of the bright highlights so that when we go to look at the final drawing, it doesn't look like a bunch of random shapes like we had in the uh, BMW wheel. So this is just another one of those instances where um, you just keep plugging along, even though it doesn't look like much now. Uh, make sure that you draw an array of highlights and shadows so that when you're wrapping up your illustration of this part of the car, you have enough to look at to see what's missing. All right, so now we're just going to wrap up the center portion of the wheel by adding a few paths that represent the lug nuts and the center cap. And now I just want to add a few really simple highlights down here where the light is shining on the barrel of the wheel. So here I'm just playing with some gradients that will eventually become the barrel of the wheel just to see how much extra detail we can add to this car. And again, this is on one of those bottom ellipse shapes. So once I turn the rest of them on, as you can see off to the right, that not all of those eyes are on. So not all of the ellipses are turned on right now. So when I go to turn them all on, it doesn't appear that the gradient is actually doing much of a favor. In fact, it looks like it's hindering. So we're going to go back through and I change each one of those back to a solid fill color instead of the gradient. It looked good on the muffler tips, but didn't quite work out on the wheels for this particular illustration. All right, so let's add just a few more last minute highlights that we might have missed earlier. Perfect, these last ones don't necessarily have to be a shape. I am literally just assigning a stroke, going to the profile of that stroke and changing it from uniform to um, kind of just pointed at one end. And feel free to play along with the different profiles that you can have on a stroke and the different stroke edges. And if you don't feel like having those change later, then you can change those to shapes as well by expanding. Okay, so since the front wheel of this car is so small and the details aren't going to matter much, Let's just see what we can do by copying, by holding down option and dragging that rear wheel shape. Okay, it looks a little off. So let's shrink it down even more. And then now let's just squeeze it. 
There we go. And let's see how that works. That actually, I was surprised by this as well, that that actually looked as good as it did. So I'm running with it. This doesn't always work out in your favor, copying wheels. It's not, um, it's not something I usually like to do. When I look at other car illustrators, I can tell right away if they only drew the wheel once or they took the time to draw both front and rear wheels. But as I've stated before in this particular illustration, the main focus was this passenger tail light. So seeing as how the front wheel is the furthest object from the camera, um, and we just happened to get lucky by uh, not keeping all the proportions constrained when we squeezed that wheel to make it appear the same perspective. It actually worked out, um, but don't get your hopes up. It usually doesn't work out. Okay, so let's create another layer since we're tidying up loose ends now. And let's just add a hint of a highlight on the tire. So we're going to create um, an almost black, but just a little bit more richness in that black, or I guess you could say yellow if you're thinking of CMYK terms, but it's not quite full black. It's not the blackest of black that you can get. So here we're just going to add one more little highlight. And again, these are very deep gray colors but they're just enough to stand out against the really, really rich black that we use for that shadow layer. And I don't believe I kept this. Yeah, so the final look that I usually do is um, I'll tuck the wheels up under the vehicle just a little bit more than the original photo. And if it looks believable, I'll keep it. If not, then I usually try not to like slam them too much, just enough to make it look a little bit more uh, stancy, more like it has a little better stance. All right, what are we missing? We're missing door handles. That's usually the last thing that I do. I don't know why it's the last thing that I do. I have published an illustration before where I forgot to add the door handles, but luckily they're very simple and easy to go back in and add. It's usually about six shapes or less. So it's basically just a highlight, a shadow, and a top and a bottom. Most door handles are very similar. And then yeah, once you get your shapes drawn, it's just a matter of layering them in the correct, um, the correct path pattern, if you will, um, the correct layers. So um, obviously the, the bottom shadows you want on the very bottom of your layer and then um, I've also found that sometimes with wheels and like with door handles, you can copy them, but in this particular instance, it just didn't work out. Once you've drawn the first one, if you can't copy it and you need to redraw the second one as an entirely different part of the car, they're usually pretty similar. So those look very believable and we're just going to leave them at that. And that wraps up this illustration of the Mugen Civic from the Philippines. Again, I am really sorry that I did not screen record drawing the emblems of the word Civic or the logo, the Mugen logos on this car, or even the license plate. I totally forgot to screen record those and I apologize guys. But as always, thanks for watching and hitting that like button. If you're interested in more Adobe CC tutorials and other car related nonsense, consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Also be sure to check out my Instagram and Patreon pages, which are linked below and I will catch you guys in the next one. All right, everyone. One last thing before you go, a huge thank you to all of the new subscribers and to all of the subscribers in general. I never thought this channel would go this direction and I couldn't be more happy to keep it going. So speaking of up next, we're going to do a really quick overview on this S13 hatch that is owned by myself and my husband and is also part of the intro to this channel. 
Then we will be covering Ruben's Laurel from the popular YouTube channel Juicebox for You. They are linked below. I'm super excited to start that with you guys. That's going to be really exciting. And then last but not least, coming down the pike is this Ferrari illustration, which blows my mind still to this day. And I can't wait to move forward with my actual illustrations to start using the technique that I used with this Ferrari on my coming illustrations. But I do want to keep this content for you guys going on YouTube. Uh, so it's kind of a difficult balance between the day job, making YouTube videos and actually sitting down for two to three hours at a time and getting lost in some good music and illustrating. You guys know how that is. So bear with me. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my Patreon page as well. I'm also going to be launching a merch store. So be able to check that out so that you can get all these fine illustrations for yourself and be sure to follow my Instagram pages. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to help you guys out. DM me your questions and it's been a fun ride and I hope to keep it going. Thanks a lot. Peace.